my intention is to present the idea, the concept of self, as a fragile and fluid concept, that it is formed through your childhood years, and that its embodiment within you is then carried throughout your later life, containing the objects and places you live, your friendships and experiences. My intent is to explore the development and concept of identity by examining the theories and concepts of Gaston Bacalard's The Poetics of Space, and that the poetry and prose of the author Fernando Pessoa. As a metaphor the examination of their work, I will be using my own childhood home and the possessions that I still have. Alongside this, I am writing a play that explores a man waiting in a room to talk to a dead author. There are a number of artists that I'm strongly identified with so far that use a diverse number of critical and artistic techniques to explore and create. These include strong analytical process with archival material, use of performance, mixture of photography techniques, the use of text and informative and elliptical messages. The artists and practitioners include Sophie Cal, Katia Liebman, Fiona Banner, Keith Carter, Diane Arbus, Alex Soth, Walker Evans, and Saul Leiter. Added to this are a number of current theatre practitioners that include Katie Mitchell and Robert Lepage. Using Katia Liebman as an example of a practitioner whose process is to explore themselves within their work, in the press release handout for a exhibition retrospective number one, her work was described through her experience with various media led her to choosing photography and her orientation towards early and simple processes. This widened the scope in her search for new means of expression and a different perspective on reality. For me, these artists specifically look at using their own experiences, journals and histories as a core narrative within their work. John Berger in Understanding a Photograph says, Photographs bear witness to a human choice being exercised in a given situation. A photograph is a result of the photographer's decision that it is worth recording that this particular event or this particular object has been seen. It is this decision to take or not to take a photograph that fascinates me and which I'm very interested to explore and debate. On the 7th of September 2019, my father-in-law, Alan, married to my mother for over 30 years, passed away. He had been diagnosed with an incurable blood disorder in late 2018 and had been given three to six months. He lived for 12 months more. A large part of 2019 was involved with travelling to the house I grew up in Fleet, visiting them both every few weeks more as the time for Alan extended, to cook, chat, help around the house. Their life became a routine of carer and being cared for as Alan slept while my mother cared. During this time, I took a number of informal and off-the-cuff photographs, not really knowing if I would display them publicly or reflect on them, though I suspect there was a deeper recognition within myself of the journey I was on with my photography and my continuing exploration and relationship to the presence to the world around me. In November 2019, as part of reflection at Conway Hall, I displayed Seven Spice Peking Duck, clearly indicating in the text that accompanied the four photographs that this was one of the final meals that my myself and my partner cooked for, my, for Alan and Mavis at my home in Fleet. In the month before reflection, I went down to Fleet to ask my mum her permission to exhibit the photographs of Alan. She responded by asking, would anyone be interested in them? This has stayed with me 
and drives me in 2020, and I will be examining this question of who would be interested in the work that I produced. Currently the work is formed in two parts, photographic reflections on possessions and objects within a home, and the performance of a play in which a man waits in a room for a dead writer to arrive. Remembrance of daydreams is about the resonances that we keep within ourselves from our childhood and the house that we are brought up in and how we draw on these throughout our lives. When asked by Melvin Bragg about the driving themes in your work, the playwright and dramatist Dennis Potter in his final interview replied, they come as you grow and your childhood remains. I mean, I forget. I've forgotten who said it, but I remember reading some essay by some writer saying that for any writer, the first 14 years of his or her life are the crucible. Anyway, no matter what you do. But of course, you add on and you use your experiences. Potter's answers resonate with me as it connects with your past and with your future identity and centres the idea of self firmly in the early years and your childhood memories. On the 1st of March 2020, I performed a short 10-minute extract of Pessoa, Myself, I at the Jack Studio Theatre in London. Audiences' responses to the work included, This was a fascinating character piece, which made me as an audience member think as I as it posed questions and didn't always provide answers, which I really like. The process of Sophie Cowell, Katia Liebman and Keith Carter are particularly relevant in how I'm thinking about my work and the creation of an end product, whether it be an exhibition, a photo book or a performance. I have personally been involved in four photographic exhibitions between 2016 and 2019. I believe in the power of photography to cause change, as I believe in the power of art, of theatre, sculpture, of music, poetry and words to also cause change, affect us, disturb our minds, make us fall in and out of love, to divide and unite us. Whether this results in action is another question. In theatre, a change in a character's action is often caused by new information that is in direct conflict with their own beliefs or vision of the world. In Ibsen's play A Doll's House, Nora spends the entire play convinced that her husband, once he finds out her secret, that he would sacrifice his reputation for her. After the secret is revealed, she discovers the truth that Torvald is not at all the kind of person she had believed him to be, and that their marriage has been based on unusual fantasies and misunderstandings. Once Nora sees how reality is, her perspective on her marriage and position in the marriage changes, and she leaves her husband. The photograph and its prevalence within the world, as Berger and Sontag have mentioned, can be seen as a potential causes, cause of us being anaesthetised and apathetic, and could be attrib attributed to an overloading of our senses and responses. It can create a before and after, and a world is different, but it also can lead to a sense of, so what? On September the 11th, I remember getting into a tube to head to a meeting in London before the first plane struck, and then leaving the tube station, passing a coffee shop, and seeing the footage of the first plane striking. The world changed. I remember sitting in a meeting 30 minutes later, wondering what we are doing here, discussing theatre. A single photograph can cause a disturbance in your consciousness, but does it this in itself cause action within you? Has a photograph brought a war to a close, rather than the white flag of their opponent? Does the death of a child on a beach 
then save future children. Hamlet spends three quarters of the play deliberating whether he saw his father as a ghost or not, and then he is the master at inaction. Then in Act 4, Scene 4, on a single speech he shifts from how all occasions do inform against me to my thoughts be bloody or be nothing work. And what has caused this? A single image of Fortinbras preparing for war. What I believe a photograph can do is create a dialectic discussion between the viewer and the photograph, a disturbance within. I believe my work is rooted in the present, but is seeking to explore the past and how we have come to the realisations we have. My photography is formed by my theatre making process and the techniques that I have used to work with playwrights, actors and designers and how I have presented that work to an audience. There is a phrase at the beginning of The Cherry Orchard by Anton Chekhov, spoken by Yepi Kodov, that has become central to my process as a theatre director. To paraphrase a literal translation of the Russian text, it's three degrees outside and the cherry trees are all in blossom. I don't understand this Russian weather of ours. In 1991, I worked with the Russian theatre director Genieta Yanaskaya, and she introduced me to this method of analysis when working as a theatre director, that there are moments when talking in both life and in plays that we, characters, are caught in paradox, irony, self-assessment and realisation. What Yepi Kodov is trying to do is hold the two opposing views at the same time, of death, cold, and the blossoms, life, and see the significance of this in the return of Ranaskaya, the owner of the cherry orchard. And through the paradox of the two opposing views, he comes to the realisation in the lack of his own understanding, in that he cannot clearly articulate what he feels inside of him. Through the analysis and consideration of paradox, irony, self-assessment and realisation, it means that acting, theatre and the live performance are always in the now. That in a single moment a realisation can come to you and your world or perspective can change irrevocably. This analytical technique is central cornerstone to my process. This potential to change is what I'm seeking within the, this body of work, that the memories that you have deep inside can be brought to the surface and affect a change within your character and given circumstances.